back. Hello, you majestic, wonderful friends. You. Hello. Welcome, welcome to back. episode four of the Broken Bad Bitches podcast. I am pew, Hannah. Pew, pew. I'm Prissy. Yes. And we are ready coming to you live. It is 9.43 p.m. Which is early to you and late to me. It's almost past your bedtime here. I am very tired. You know, the last time we recorded was actually pretty recently. So as far as check-ins, honestly, I'm the same. Same number of toenails, same everything. I think we... The only thing that's been happening to us is the full moon in Scorpio was super intense for the both of us. I don't know about you guys, but I literally have felt like I'm, it's like I'm dreaming. The past few days have felt like a weird, foggy haze. And everyone's like, no, you're just dissociating. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's been heavy. And normally- No, it's been weird. Normally like full moon energy doesn't, it's like really smooth for me. And normally I feel more scattered during like new moon. I mean, yeah, during new moons, but no, this time Very it's bad and it was, it's a super moon. So that means like the energy is a little heavier mm-hmm. and it's in Scorpio, which is all about like that deep inner below the mm-hmm. surface, mm-hmm. you know, type of energy. And, and so it's just really forced. It's really triggering. Right. And things that, you know, the Scorpio is so secretive with are now being brought to light even more surface. so. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, Jupiter is now in retrograde. It's exciting. So it's like, yeah, it's going to force you to really like stop and analyze the things that you're doing. Uh, I'm just tired. And if they're enough for what you need to do. And I was like, And if they align with what you're doing. And we have definitely been feeling that. Mm -hmm. Um, But everything's going fine. I feel like today has been a really good day. Priscilla, you leave to Denver. Yes. So that's exciting as well. Very excited. I love Denver so much. There's this little place called D bar, I think, in downtown, and you should go there. Okay. No, they have me, a great lobster roll. Send me all of your suggestions. I'm going to um, stay in a condo like in downtown Denver. Cute. And then, um, like, the next morning, we rented a car and we're going to like go Cute. to Garden of the Gods and oh, we're going to wow. go hiking and sightseeing and stuff. So, like, we're going to spend s- s- uh, Friday in the city because I, because my best friend just went there for her birthday, which was so funny. Her husband surprised her on a trip there and she was, I was like, how was it? And That's right. She did. She was like, Denver is very like just big city. She's like, it's beautiful though. But she was like, you mm-hmm. know, she's like going to another big city because they actually stayed in Colorado Springs. And she was like, that's where you get a little bit more mm-hmm. of like that mountainy vibe. Yeah. And I definitely want to experience both because I love me a good downtown. I love me a skyline. So I'm excited to spend no. the time in the city, but I do want to also like see sites. Yeah. It does have a very lively downtown and it's, it almost kind of reminds me like, Don't say Austin. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll just be quiet. But it's just in the way that it's a very chill vibe. Like, you know what I mean? It's Mm -hmm. not so glitz and glam and everyone's worried. It's like, it's just very chill. chill There's like a lot of dogs, which is, I don't know where I was going with that, to be honest. There's just a lot of dogs. (laughs) I like the dogs, so I'm fine with it. I'll say, I think you're just like trying to say like, it's like Austin and dogs and it's like, you know. No, I'm like, it's like a chill hipster vibe almost. And, and that's what I was expecting to go into. And I think I'm just always liking to experience new places and new right. cultures. And when I went, I went up to Estes Park and that's like I've heard really that. up in the mountains. Mm-hmm. And girl, I could not breathe. No. I have not been that high up in elevation before. And I was like, wow, guys, the air. My friend said that like it's sparse. Matter of fact, starting tomorrow, I'm just going to um I probably need to start today actually. Like I just really want to get hydrated. Yes. Because I heard that elevation and we are planning on going It um, dehydrates you so much. Literally you'll get drunk faster. I didn't realize this well, until that saves me money on my travel budget. No, literally I had like three drinks the whole time and I'm like pretty sure I was just like <laughs> Woo Yeah. <laughs> like I had like one of the big white claw truly things and yeah. I was like drunk well i'm going with i'm taking my son and um i'm taking my niece and so it's, i'm just it's, saying even more so than be careful because like on yeah. accident like what would normally not make you feel all crazy yeah is gonna be way more intense is it the elevation that yeah no literally the, oh, okay, it's you. like you're you know because you're when you're dehydrated like mm-hmm. if you're drinking in a hot tub it gets you drunk faster because you're like dehydrating yourself oh like i got you. so, so it's so literally like, like being in a dehydrated that. like yeah you're like a prune mm-hmm a drunk prune, not a vibe. A little drunk Colorado hiker chic prune. <laughs> not with, a vibe. Not a vibe. The, not, not at all. Okay, we're getting sidetracked here. So let's 
go ahead and get going about our episode. What do we have planned for episode four, Priscilla? Why don't you tell the people? So I think today was, um, well, we had another episode planned today and Hannah called me and it's a pretty heavier episode that we're going to get into next week. Um, I think, you know, again, we want to be really multifaceted on this Mm -hmm. podcast. And she was like, you know, with the energy of the full moon that was just passed, she's like, Priscilla, I just need a moment. Like, I, I can't do it right now. And yeah, I'm, it was you know, a lot. We we just had a really rough week. And so we're like, let's do something more positive before we kind of get into that. And mm-hmm. so... But still meaningful. Something that we've talked about before is just been like a lot of body positivity. And I know we've had stories about our insecurities mm-hmm. and how we've kind of are still working through those and how we've worked through them in the past. Because I feel like other people out there have their insecurities and it makes them feel less than. And I think mm-hmm. that if we talk about them and make them beautiful and how everyone should cherish their insecurities more and how they work through them. So I think that, we you know, we can just kind of tap into that. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that with anything that makes you uncomfortable, um, talking about it more and facing it head on is obviously a better way to deal with it. A lot of people, I think, let it, their insecurities kind of eat away at them and dictate how they move through life. Mm -hmm. You know, it dictates what they wear and how they dress. And, you know, maybe they don't feel confident to wear an article of clothing or something that they would want to, but they're literally so insecure that they feel they are trapped. And I've definitely been there. But yeah, just with time and love and care, I've grown out of that for the most part. And I've really learned that, you know, somebody else's beauty does not at all diminish or take away from yours. Exactly. I think we started talking about it because we had a conversation about, you know, kind of one of your insecurities growing up. And it was how you always kind of felt, I guess, skinny shamed, which is a a thing that we always talk about fat shaming. And it's like Mm -hmm. more commonly known, but it's also like Skinny shaming is a thing. No, it definitely is a thing. And it's funny too, because then um, not only are you legitimately like being bullied, you know, anytime you are talking negatively and speaking negatively and rudely to someone about their appearance, you know, is shaming someone. And it's not appropriate no matter why you're doing it or if you think they're too skinny or if you think they're too big or Mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. But it's funny because when you're like, skinny or thin. I don't really like the word skinny, to be honest. Um, But when you're thin, you know, that's, it can be more of like the beauty standard. And so you don't get the sympathy from other people. Mm -hmm. And so people kind of think it's appropriate to like tell you, you look hungry. There's just no reason to Mm -hmm. talk negatively about somebody else's body. And I I think that's why maybe like being like, Mm shamed for being smaller isn't as talked about because I think people identify it as like you said it was kind of like that's more of the standard so like how dare you feel some kind of way and so I think it's kind of like almost being counterproductive because then you're shaming that person who is like that and it might be because of their own insecurities and it's just like Mm -hmm. and then they want you to feel insecure about your body and it's like a really ugly negative mirror effect that's going on when we have those conversations it is. And it, yeah, it can feel very passive aggressive. Mm-hmm. Like I'll say something and they're like, oh, so sad. That's so hurtful. And I'm just like, all right, but I don't tell you that your problems are invalid. So why are yeah. you invalidating me? Just because exactly you're using me as a mirror and you're saying, I don't like this about myself. And now I'm going to ridicule you, you for about it. it. Yeah. And I mean, that is something that happens a lot of times and for a lot of reasons outside of body shaming. Yeah. I think people are insecure about different things. And I think those insecurities are purely stemmed from, I'm ashamed that this part of me is being portrayed outward, whether it's like a personality thing or whether it's like a appearance thing. Right. And something to think about too is if no one ever told you that that was a problem, would you inherently think it was a problem? Mm-hmm. Like, cause I remember growing up, I never had a problem being really thin and skinny. And then one day in school, other kids started telling me that it was like a problem mm-hmm. and coming up to me and like 
making fun of me for eating disorders, which first of all, that... Oh my goodness. Yeah. Which first of all, I never had eating disorders personally, yeah. but a lot of people do. And that's, that's... a really serious topic. Mm-hmm. You know, people can, that can kill people and that's just not funny to me. And, but I was bullied for eating disorders that I didn't even have. Mm-hmm. And I would have never looked at myself and been like, oh yeah, you don't look like this, this is bad you know, until other people and, and came to me and told me yeah, that that's other bad. other people create that connotation in your head that this mm-hmm. means this. And I think that's that's so sad. And I think a lot of kids have to go through that, whether it's, again, like their weight or their height or how they talk or how they dress. Like, there's just so many mm-hmm. things that you somebody could be very insecure about. Right. And, it, and the things that happen, especially with that kind of stuff in your childhood really carry over. Oh yeah. Cuz kids are mean. Kids are so mean. I remember my my mom has like really bright red hair and I think it looks cool. Mm-hmm. But she like hated it growing up and was always made fun of for like red hair. You know just like yeah. weird. That's I think weird. just people always find differences and they mm-hmm. want to point that out cuz they they can't make sense with it in their head. Right. But it's and then ugly. you're just like a little kid and Yeah. Yeah, but those things that happen can definitely impact your future so greatly. Um, I think some of my insecurities growing up was, um, well, I developed really quickly. Like I had, I had double, no, yeah, I had double D boobs in eighth grade. Well, that happened to one of my best friends, Elizabeth. Yeah, it was rough. And I remember my mom was deployed and my, I was just, it was me and my dad and he had to like take me bra shopping and it was Uh. like, such a bad experience and like I just wanted to cry and like I was like always being talked about like on the bus and I was like kind of getting a lot of attention from older men it was just oh was that's probably so scary care about it yeah it's like I think that's you know why I'm kind of really confident about my body now because I've like it was just triggering from very young about you know always being overly sexualized and it gotta have to like take that power back and like yeah and say, own no, this it. is my sexuality mm-hmm. you know but that was something I've always been super insecure about. No, that's hard. And then all of a sudden you're like getting all of this attention and like, ugh. Yeah. Some it, of it, that's creepy. It's, a little. it's not good. So, and I think just even more recently, I'm really, I'm, I mean, I'm still working on it because I still am really hard on myself. So this is something too that like I'm, you know, applying to myself because it mm-hmm. took me a while because I'm really hard on myself in my body. Like I sometimes never like really feel happy with how I look. And I think it's cause you know, I want this, you know, like kind of like the social media, like that. I was going that, to say, mm-hmm. do you feel that you look at all of these really, you know, obviously objectively super gorgeous women, but yeah. you know, they live a different life than you. And some of them have had a lot more work. Yeah done or they go and can afford to be personally trained every day, twice a day. And then, and then they get the fat froze off of their bodies, frozen off of their bodies. (laughs) I like how you're holding your hands up. (laughs) (laughs) I like how my little uh, claws. I love it. But you know, a lot of these people do all of these things and are allowed the time and the income to do a lot of these things Mm -hmm. that the typical person might not be. And in addition to that, they probably as well edit their pictures. Yeah. So it's double unrealistic. And then, you know, you're a 28 year old woman. Can you lower your voice? And okay. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. That's fair. I apologize. I did not mean to say it like that. So bold. Wow. (laughs) Did that hurt? Yikes. Yeah. And anyway, it hurts worse. That's the last week you can say that. Oh, yeah. T minus super close. I can't do math, but really like close. Five days, but go ahead. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. We digress. I don't have the countdown. I need to get it. I do. I need to get it together. I'll send it to you. You are so extra. What was it? <laughs> For me, I think it's like, how do we establish what we think is beautiful? So it's kind of, I'm sitting back and wondering, like, am I, I think I love that look. And so that's why, you know, it kind of makes me insecure. You know, whenever you're not like what you want to look like, but then it's kind of like, well, no, I'm good in my own body. So you have to like wonder, like, is it a reflection or is it something I genuinely want? You know, there is that stigma of like, do you want to look like this because you genuinely want to? Or is it like you kind of do feel feel pressured from like what society currently says right. is like a high standard of beauty, you know? Right. Like in 15 years when 
you know, the plastic surgery look is not the it thing. It look, yeah. Are you still going to be happy with your, yeah, like, bot body? Because you Which, have to think about that. Mm-hmm, because that's forever. I mean, you know, some things you can get removed and you can mm-hmm. go back, but that's just so much. And Which also kind of we can segue in, like, how do we feel like this is impacting women right now? Right, in this age where literally little kids have extreme untapped access to a lot of places on the internet. Oh, like for sure. You know, kids are on Instagram and TikTok and mm-hmm. there our sound producer Jake just told us a story about how someone in his family, like a little niece, knows the WAP song from TikTok <laughs> and was singing it. Yeah. She said she doesn't cook and she doesn't clean. <laughs> she said, listen, honey. <laughs> She said what she said, but oh, God. it's just like, it, that's not appropriate, Yeah, no, but that just all. makes a statement of how much we are exposing the younger generation to, mm-hmm. and they take these things at face value, you know, when you're a little kid, you, you don't know how everything works, you know, you don't know that it's a whole production team and someone's kerfluffing her hair and someone's yeah. putting the... You know, which it's and a also, whole team. I, it's not that it's like I love that look, but I think we need to kind of not have no more like quote unquote standard. There should not be a standard of beauty. Everything is right. beautiful. I think that's what we kind of need to open up to is like we need to show more. We need to have a movement of I think women showing more positivity and what they mm-hmm. look like because then we're gonna see that more in TV shows and in magazines and on social media and women truly embracing who they are and not feeling the need to. And I think we're do starting things. to yeah. head that direction. It needs more traction and it needs more good strong roles as far as like people who we're seeing play these characters and yeah, I don't know. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done. But I think like 10, 20 years ago, it was not nearly as inclusive as it is now. Not to say it's perfect, but hopefully we're just making steps in the right direction. But I do agree, like, you know, uh, generationally or through the decades, there's like the it body type and it changes and it changes and it changes. But like you said, we shouldn't have one it body type. Mm -hmm. Like, who's to say that the... Kim Kardashian body is less so than the Kindle body or vice versa. Yeah, I actually did a uh, social media experiment on that because I'm really into like psychology and sociology. So I'll do like a lot of random polls and I posted a picture of um, Kylie and Kendall. Mm -hmm. And I was like, men only, like what body type do you prefer? And I think there's maybe like two men, but like majority of all the men chose Kendall. And what Mm. was so funny was the women that voted, they didn't read the instructions. They were not diligently listening. No, but it was interesting because in a weird turn of events, the women who voted all voted for Kylie. Hmm. So that just furthers the idea that these, that people are kind of, getting their bodies done and doing all this for themselves, which yeah, is fine. And, I love it. And it's a look. I think both of those women are oh, perfect. beautiful. Yeah. No, beautiful. I just thought that was something like an interesting point to bring up. No, so definitely. Like, are, we, are we doing this? Yeah. For ourselves. Right. And I think a lot of people who go through with surgeries definitely do it for themselves and do it because it's what they want and yeah. it makes them feel happier. And oh, I'm, I'm all so about that. pro plastic surgery. Yeah, do I love what it. what your heart wants. So I looked up some interesting facts that I wanted to kind of like pinpoint and saying like, are okay. we being impacted from social media and like, you know, things like that. It says 80% of women stated that when they watch TV, they watch movies, any type of the media, magazines, that it makes them feel insecure. Mm-hmm. 80%. I thought that was like a huge number. It's crazy. That is. But if you think about it, it's all on purpose yeah they make us feel inadequate because like even um what's a good example mouthwash like no one ever used mouthwash and then listerine f- coined the term uh halitosis bad breath so that way now you're insecure and now it's in your own head that now you need this listerine some people do need the listerine well that's true but a lot of people maybe don't need all these 
chemicals and, and all these other yeah. things that they're doing. But just at every turn, really, media is selling us on the idea that we are not good enough. Oh. We need mascara because your eyelashes aren't long enough. And you need to dye your hair because the color isn't right. And you need to do all these things. And you know, like how many extension, like hair extension ads I see on Instagram a day? And my hair goes down to my hips. Like, uh, oh, not okay. to brag, but inches. <laughs> um. <laughs> um, another one said 42% of girls in grades one to three. So this is six, Little seven girls. to eight years old wow. want to be thinner. At six years old? Mm-hmm. <sighs> and this one is 81% of 10-year-olds are afraid to be fat. Makes me so sad to Go hear that. Go pause for a minute. When you were seven years old, mm-hmm. do you remember thinking that way about your, like, body? I do, because in seventh grade, I kind of, like, leaned out a lot, and I got small, and then my titties grew, so it was, like, it was really overwhelming. But up until then, like I was a chunkier kid Mm -hmm. and I remember being so insecure about that because Mm -hmm. all of my friends were like, just, you know, like smaller, more petite. And I was bigger and I was so insecure about that. I remember like pictures of me, even when I look back at it, like when I was at barbecues, I could like see myself kind of like sit, like I wasn't truly confident because of how I looked. Mm -hmm. So and that was like, you know, since I was, a little, little I think, kid. I think I can remember like about being eight or nine. Wow. Um, this last fact I thought was kind of interesting. It says the average woman in America is 5'4". I'm 5'4". And the average weight is 140 pounds. Oh, good for them. Um, so with that, the average model in America, so mm-hmm. what is constantly being portrayed to us, is a, a woman who's 5'11", 117 pounds. What? So it's, it was very interesting when I wrote them down. You can kind of like compare so them and just like. framed. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. No, there's and nothing wrong with it, but it's. It's just not the standard. A standard of beauty that. Yeah. And it's funny that, you know, we have all these fashion shows and fashion weeks and all those people are exactly like you said, almost six foot tall mm-hmm. and barely a hundred pounds. And exactly. there's nothing wrong with that literally at no, all. No, but like, like you're, can you imagine a fashion show with women of all heights and all shapes and I all I think that'd be way color. more fun and, and beautiful. And see how the clothes fit on those bodies as yeah. well. I think that would promote more body positivity. Because uh, there's nothing wrong with models being model-esque, but just yeah. why don't we have more of an accurate representation of the world yeah i think there's a lot of things that we could do to start changing for a more positive body positivity movement um but i know you know just something i guess that i can share from just my personal experiences i really developed a different relationship with food and fitness and just overall wellness Mm -hmm. because if you really love and appreciate your body and all the small things that it does for you on a daily basis and how amazing the systems of your body and all the chemicals and hormones and like, it's just so phenomenal. And all the work that your body is literally doing constantly, constantly. to keep you, Who you are. alive in the way that two people can, their bodies can withstand a lot. Oh yeah. Crazy, crazy things. And from we should a, be so happy and blessed for our bodies. For, from a spirituality standpoint, it's, you know, our souls chose to be in this physical body. That is a lot of pressure. And it withstands us living in this 3D world and how amazing and precious and beautiful that is. So right. I said all that to say, like, once I kind of started appreciating my body and even to the deepest levels, mm-hmm. it really changed the way I developed my relationship with food and fitness. And even like, you know, like we talked about in our last episode, like meditation and all that. Like I was trying to be holistically mind, body, and soul because I realized what I put into my body, I got out. And so I wanted Absolutely. to put the best things in. And I did that with food and I had to relearn food and like transition. I actually transitioned to plant-based and, you know, I'm not mm-hmm. pushing any diet on anybody. I feel like whatever works for you is your relationship with your food. But for me, that was something big because it was 
being mindful of and, and feeling how my body felt different mm-hmm. and felt more energetic and lighter. And I could feel my systems <laughs> were like more effective. fired up. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it was amazing. And then when I would kind of, I'll say lack of a better term relapse and like, you know, have chicken or have something like I felt like shit. No, I mean, there's a reason you literally gorge yourself at, uh, you know, Thanksgivings and stuff. And then you have to nap because your body's trying so hard to digest your food. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I don't have any actual statistics on it, but you use a lot of your actual energy day to day, literally just digesting the food that you eat. Isn't that crazy? And we feed our bodies a lot of things that aren't even digestible, like corn, corn oh, yeah. syrup, corn starch, corn something is literally in like everything. Yeah. It's in Coca-Cola. It's in your food, your drinks. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not preaching here because I love me a good... Elote? Ooh, well, yes, <laughs> that too. <laughs> but just a lot of processed foods rather. All yeah. these processed mm-hmm. foods are like poison They're to not our made body. for human consumption. Right. Yeah. You can literally tell the difference if you wake up and start your day with a nice smoothie versus if you woke up and like ate Chips Ahoy and then like McDonald's, you would feel like shit. You oh, can yeah. literally tell oh, like yeah. as soon as you put it into your body that it feels like nourishing. Oh, yeah. And so just relearning that and like you said, just kind of having better habits and I just been more mindful of like, you know, trying to drink some tea with my coffees and like lower the amount of caffeine, like just anything. Really, it's just moderation. Trying That's to, what I need to work on. Trying to do things in moderation. And um, for fitness too, I had to find a love for for fitness. It's just growing up, I never, I hated it. Like I hated running, I hated all that, but I love to run now. And I, I keep um, like a little track record in my yeah. phone. Like every time I run a mile and I like, just cause I want to like track my progress right, on right. that. And um, oh when I discovered God. yoga, I want to say I found yoga, like, I want to say five or six years ago, the first time I like really did yoga, oh my God, like it changed my life. And that's been something that's been incorporated in my fitness routine. And when you see, and like when I was training more consistently, like seeing my body, pr- like actively, like take like this better shape. And like, mm-hmm. I just felt so good. And you have all this energy dog like oh, it's so that's something that I always forget is that how energized one thing that I will say is that I have definitely fallen off the wagon when it comes to working out yeah and I need to stop making excuses for myself you know what I'm saying it I'm saying it to you Priscilla I'm saying it to, to all the lovely listeners to all of my fellow bad bitches out there yes I'm 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 going to get my shit together. And I'm getting thick this year. Period. Get thick on them. I had three birth control shots. (laughs) I'm ready. Three depot shots in. Three depot shots in. And I'm feeling thick (laughs) with a Q. I'm going to hold you accountable. I need, I've been doing well, but I want to start like really, I think taking it up a notch for sure too. I want to just get serious about life in general. I think it's... (laughs) I think I'm just so lackadaisical all the time. I'm just chilling and I'm like, really don't have the right to be. This is a tangent. Never mind. I'm done. Go ahead with your with your love for yoga boo. What more have you to say? I think that's it. Um, I love yoga too. Um I definitely did find a really strong love for fitness though when I was in high school. I started working out and lifting and really being obsessed with like gaining leg muscle specifically, I would be like doing- Leg day. Every day, leg <laughs> day, right now. <laughs> Double squat, hip thrust. Ah, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's how I'm going to be. That's how- <laughs> That's how you're going to be back in the gym with your energy. Yeah, that's how I'm going to be back in the gym. But now my gym closes- Closes? <laughs> at 10. Well, first of all, I joined this gym that was supposed to be 24 hour. And then COVID ruined the world. Yeah. And yeah. And now we're in a panoramic. And so they close at like 10 p.m. And they're not even open Sundays. Mm-hmm. That's like my staple day off. Yeah. And it's like very If upsetting. we can't go to the gym on our day off, then where the hell could we go? If we can't go to Bella Noche, where the <laughs> hell can we go? 
<laughs> we all know what we're talking about. <laughs> they're they're cool. They're hip. They know. They've heard of it. Um, but I do actually have a story though. Like I had told y'all, um, I did get bullied a lot in elementary school about being b- very thin. And I actually can pinpoint it down to this one girl. Wow. Started a huge rumor. And then it was like overnight. Every like literally before school even started, multiple people are coming up to me asking me really, first of all, things that were not true. And second of all, just wildly inappropriate things. Like, why don't you eat? Like, are you hungry? Do you need food? Oh my God. And like taunting me. And it was like a lot. And I literally lost my mind a little and had a wee bit of a breakdown. Yeah. I mean, anybody would. That's mm-hmm. awful. How old were you? Like uh, 11 or 12, oh maybe. I was like a fifth grader, sixth grader. Yeah. And so anyways, and then, oops, sorry, I'm kicking shit. It's actually my leftover snacks. <laughs> I've been eating all the snacks today, y'all. Anyways. That's not what this is about. What this is about is, so I had, that had really kickstarted my disliking for the way that I looked was that instance. And that, like from then on, it never stopped. Like that rumor never left me. Oh, wow. Like through middle school and high school? Mm Mm-hmm. And people, and just even in general, people are like, you look hungry. Like, yeah. People literally would tell me I look hungry. And it's just like, first of all, I'm fine. And also, please just mind your business. Yeah. And it's not like, it would be one thing if, you know, someone is having a legitimate problem and you pulled them aside and you said, hey, I'm worried about you. It wasn't that. They were mocking me and taunting me for Mm -hmm. these rumors. And it never really left me. And so in high school, I started to like lift weights and get really into weight training, like I had said. And then eventually... I had a speech class in 10th grade with this girl. Oh, that's a big gap from fifth, sixth grade all the way to... Yeah. So this is, this is the underdog revenge story right here. Ew, I love me a good underdog story. Yes. Always root for the underdogs. Period. So we had had this really amazing speech teacher. We got assigned to share a speech that was a really big moment for you and something that changed you and who you are as a person and how you view life. Wow, that's deep. And I told that story. Oh, wow. To this class. And I looked this girl in the eyes the whole time I was giving this speech. How and, perfect is this moment right now? Oh, my God. It was literally like, oh, ah, the, the satisfaction was yeah. real. And, then, and you know, I like to stir the pot just a little bit. So I said, and the, to make matters worse, the person is here in the room right now. And I oh, want them to know shit. I forgive them. Oh! <laughs> and it was so good. It was like literally mic drop. Like it was the most yes. satisfying moment of my life. I feel I had, it right now. Because I had learned then like to be way more okay with myself than I was. And so I was like, I'm not going to let you have that anymore. You showed how you came from a broken place and really used that to empower you and turn mm-hmm. that negative into a positive. And the girl ended up writing me like a an apology note. As she fucking should. As she should, yes. And she was like, I didn't realize what an impact that had on you. And I'm really sorry for saying those things. And I'm like, yeah, bitch. <laughs> no, yeah. no, it was fine. It's fine. She's cool, I guess. I don't like her, but <laughs> I don't hate her. But that is my story about learning to love myself and knowing that you you know people will use other people as mirrors so if they yeah. see something within themselves that they don't like they're going to take it out on you that kind of goes with our episode last week i love that i love how we're tying it all in together well it's all connected boo. all connected it is all connected i started my love for fitness and food I think like more when I kind of got on my spiritual journey, I think, you know, and I realized that I was a whole universe within myself. And like once how, you realized it was all connected. How awesome. Yeah. No, I mean, Literally. that's what it is. Once I realized how beautiful on a grand scale of things that I mm-hmm. came to be where I am right now and all that I am and how just, it's so beautiful. You can't even describe how 
no, amazing that feels. That's so beautiful. And let's all sit with that for just a moment and think that how blessed and how lucky am I and how, <laughs> what are the odds yeah. that everything worked out the way that it did every single time and it brought you right here to where you are and and it's beautiful to think about how where you are right now is going to take you and how exactly. that's going to play a part in so many other lives and how it literally and, is all connected and isn't and there that are so no beautiful mistakes. there are no mistakes the universe right. is too grand and divine to make any mistakes so you mm-hmm. are perfect and I think when you really harness in on that, and I really realize that, and it took me, it took me in my mid twenties to, to to realize that it's a process. So I went through years not feeling like that, mm-hmm. and when I felt like that, um, that's when I kind of really started my love and for, you know, just taking care of myself holistically, mm-hmm. mentally, spiritually, emotionally, like just doing all the right things, and that you are worth it because what an anomaly you are. And the universe conspired to bring you here. Yes. That's like my quote from the alchemist. Yes. And so if you made it to the end with us, we just want to say thank you guys so much. We thought it was just important to kind of share our stories about our insecurities Mm -hmm. and maybe like reach out to you guys and, you know, if this could. And you're, you're not alone. You know, I think everybody at some point has struggled with this and, you know, no matter what it is that you're insecure about, it's okay to feel the way that you feel and that your feelings are valid. Yes. But just don't forget what a blessing you are to this earth and the light that you possess and don't let anyone take that from you. And I think that is really what it boils down to is when you listen to other people's negativity about you, you're letting other people steal your light. Are you okay? Did you hurt your hand, boo? Oh, no, I just didn't want to make the noise. Okay. Go ahead. But that's really all. Thank you so, so much for being here. Um, we do have some lighter episodes planned. We do have some heavier episodes planned. So literally buckle the fuck up. Buckle in, honey. Strap in. Strap on? No. No. Not that part. That's another episode that we discussed. You're going to have to subscribe to the OnlyFans for that (laughs) one. (laughs) Anyways, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap it up then. Thank you guys so much again. And because we know you guys can't get enough of us, make sure you follow us on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram at Broken Bad Bitches. And that is an X instead of a C. You can also catch us making all the memes over at Twitter at Bitches Bad. Again, X instead of a C. And we just want to send you off today with much love and light. And we also want to tell you guys to make sure you're being kind to yourself. Your body is a temple and you are the goddess or God. That resides within it. Mm, that was beautiful. I can't take credit for that. I got this off of Pinterest from Pen- Pinterest Poetic is lovely. Peach. Oh. I got to shout whoever wrote this out because it was really beautiful. That was really beautiful. And just remember that you are more than the sum of your vessel. Ooh. You have a lot to offer this world and don't let anybody take your light from you. Period. Ooh. Couldn't even say it and you left me speechless. Oh. Okay, let's go before I break out into song and dance. (laughs) So we'll we'll see you guys every Thursday at at 7 Central Standard Time. Triple D time, baby. Dallas time. (laughs) Okay, that's enough of our nonsense for today. Make sure to catch us where you get your podcasts at Google Podcasts, Spotify, and we're going to speak that Apple Podcast has approved us by now. Correct. So (laughs) Apple Podcast as well. (laughs) Thank you so much and bye. Bye.